take your scissors, we're now going to cut some shapes out of this pre-felt. So for the green, I would really like to cut some leaf shapes. Make them as big or as small as you like. This is for you to be creative now. And hang on to the bits that you cut off, the remnants. We can use those later on. And don't just think about cutting out positive shapes. It's nice to cut out some negative shapes. And by that I mean folding the pre-felt in half and cutting a leaf shape out. The shape that's left behind that is going to form the leaf shape. So we'll incorporate that into our design somewhere, but you can also use the bit that you cut out. You can always use all of these bits and pieces in one way or another. Sometimes it's nice to work with the organic edges that are already there on your felt. So these wispy, delicate, um, natural edges. You don't always have to cut them away, work with them. Okay, I've got enough leaves now. I'm going to turn my attention to the pinky, more floral colours. And I'm going to cut roughly a circle and you can make up your own shapes here. I'm just going to cut very quickly some triangles around the edge. Okay. I'm now happy with all these bits and pieces that I've cut out of pre-felt and I'm going to arrange them onto my base as a design. The next step I'd like to show you is using some of this white fibre which is marked up as recycled sari yarn and it's beautiful. You can, it's got a very short fibre length and you can pull it apart and you can see all the intermingled bits of cottons and silks and it's going to make a great addition to our background whether it's texture or clouds or just something interesting. It'll give a nice lustre to the background. Just like with the mulberry and the tussa silk, you, you need to pull very short, very small amounts of this away. Like dandelion. And you can get this in different colours. Next I'm adding some of these lovely floral shapes. And you can lay them over the top of each other, just like you would do with paper collage. The next technique I'd like to show you is drawing with the fibres. And for this you're going to need a damp flannel. So I've got my damp flannel here and I've just folded it over into a quarter. And I'm taking some of this lovely bluey green that's in my pack. You can do this with any of the wool, any wool colour. And the first thing I'm going to do is draw some lines. I'm going to pull the fibres, pull the end but not, not disconnect completely. I'm hoping you can see. It's almost like I'm making a thread a few inches long. And then just gonna, I'm actually gonna fold it in half because I've pulled it a bit thin. If you have pulled it a bit thin and it's starting to fall to pieces, and you're just gonna start to roll it in between your fingers. And you, as I said, you're, you're making a yarn. You can do this as thin or as fat as you like, and you can, if it is too fat, you can re pull it. And what's gonna help it remain as a, as, a, as a yarn, as a thread, is rolling it. I'm hoping you can just see in the corner of the screen there, rolling it gently over, back and forth, over the surface of the damp flannel. So this doesn't need to be saturated really wet. The fact that the flannel's damp, the wool will just pick up some of that moisture. And you can roll it in your hand too. Twizzle it, play with it, a bit like you would with bread or with clay. And now you can add it to your picture. Draw with it, you can cut with it. I'm going to create some almost like stems, uprights, going straight through. The next technique I'm going to show you is very similar to the lines we've just made, the rope or the yarn, and you're going to pull away some fibres in, in, in exactly the same way, but instead of adding them as lines, you're actually just going to wrap them around your fingers and create rings, a little bit like onion rings, and you want those ends to join up and make a circle. So just use water to join those ends. And depending on how thick you make these onion rings, you can see this orangey one here. That stayed quite thick and sat on the surface. There's one there that's gone a bit 
thin and a bit wonky, a little pinky one there, a pale blue one that sort of just disappeared into the background a little. You can be creative with these. So I'm kind of happy with this one. It's quite large, but it's quite thin. I like them to be thinner rather than fatter. And I'm just gonna place it here in this location. And you can make as many of these as you want. The next technique I'm gonna show you is making dots. So to make dots, a little bit similar to the way we worked with the silk, the mulberry silk and the tussle silk, you just need to mess it up scrunch it up in your fingers. You want some of those fibres to start connecting. Add water to the palm of your hand and just gently rub the ball in the palm of your hand and it should eventually start to form a ball. You can always rub it on your flannel too. You can make them big, you can make them small and these make great centres of flowers. Another technique is using fibres to create petal shapes. So for this, if you take a small amount of fibre and you're twizzling at both ends and you might need your flannel to help. Or have a pot of water that you can dip your fingers into. Once the ends are solid and they've started to felt it together, you can pull the centre apart and it will form a petal shape. The next method I'll show you is called shearing. So once again, start with a length of fibre. I'm folding mine in half. And I'm using my scissors to just snip away at the very ends. And this is called shearing. It will help to add some texture and some detail. You can roll your fibres before you do any shearing. And it will keep the blobs that fall onto the artwork, it will keep them more solid through the, through the felting process. And lastly, we're going to be using some of the mohair yarn to add some detail. It's entirely up to you how you use this yarn. You can have lengths, stripes running like veins through your artwork, or you can take the mohair yarn, wrap it around your fingers, and create an onion ring type shape, and lay that down anywhere. When you consider laying down items in an abstract design like this, I always find it works better to have things in threes rather than twos or fives. Threes is probably the best number. And I'm just gonna add some of this orange. You can make things as simple or as detailed as you like. This is your time to be creative. And if you are a beginner, this is your chance to be experimental. These are all the techniques that I've picked up over the years. So I'm ready now to start felting.